2022 will be the year of Guild Wars 2. A new year is upon us and so is the most exciting year for Guild Wars 2. I can say that with certainty. You want to know why, right? Let's get into that. But before we do so, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and share this video with your guildies. It helps so much more than you think. Let's have a look at the new expansion. Although I've covered this topic in previous videos, the expansion is one of the most exciting features coming in 2022. The End of Dragons expansion is bound to release on February 22 of 2022. And this is somewhat special since the last expansion, Path of Fire, was released in 2017. This means that the End of Dragons expansion is the first expansion in 5 years. And this probably makes you wonder, why did it take 5 years to release a new expansion? ArenaNet, the developers of Guild Wars 2, took another approach to releasing content after Path of Fire. Instead of creating new expansions, the team at ArenaNet were determined to show new areas and stories through the living world. And this worked quite well. But players really wanted more elite specializations, more content to play and more game modes etc. Etc. In the end of Dragon's expansion, each profession gets one of those new elite specializations. This straight line, which can be accessed at level 80, allows you to play your profession or class in a new, unique way. The best example of this unique way of playing in the new expansion is the Thief. In Heart of Thorns, the first expansion, the Thief got access to the Daredevil elite specialization. This allowed the Thief to use a staff and it became even more agile. Then, a few years later in Path of Fire, the Thief Thief was able to use the Deadeye Elite Specialization. This allowed the Thief to use a rifle and allowed you to play like a sniper. This was more of a stationary role. But now, in End of Dragons, the Thief is able to play as a Spectre. The Spectre uses Shadow Magic and has access to a Shadow Shroud. Moreover, a Spectre can now use a Scepter in combat and is now able to heal allies in combat. And it's actually pretty good at it too. So if you have a Thief, you can now be a support instead of a DPS. You you don't have to, but you can if you want to. And next to those elite specializations, the expansion offers us new maps based on the original Guild Wars factions. Take for example Xingzhe Island, a bright, colorful and cheerful area. Or on the other hand, the Echo Vault Wilds, a somewhat gothic, darker forest area with the House of Helzer in it. We've seen a number of these areas already on developer live streams. You can check them out if you like, they are all on the official Guild Wars 2 YouTube channel. Also, a new mount the Siege Turtle can be earned in the new End of Dragons expansion. This is the first mount that can carry two people. Path of Fire introduced us to mounts back in 2017. However, these mounts could only carry one player, which was yourself. The Siege Turtle has a rider or driver who controls the movement of the Siege Turtle. Then, in the back, we have a gunner who can use the Siege Turtle's cannons to fire at enemies. To conclude the expansion segment, players are also able to do other activities outside of combat. This is also pretty unique. End of Dragons introduces the player to skiffs and fishing. Skiffs are small boats that can carry multiple players. If you are at shore or on a skiff, you are also able to cast your fishing rod. Whilst fishing, you can catch new fish, which you can of course cook. Also, there will be a number of achievements tied to fishing. There is plenty to look forward to in the new expansion. Another exciting feature that will be expanded upon are the world restructuring systems in World vs World. Wait, hold up, wasn't this supposed to be here already? Right, let's, let's have a short recap. The world restructuring system was mentioned a couple years ago to keep the world versus world community healthy and thriving. In order to do so, you were able to create an alliance. If you have ever played the original Guild Wars, you'll be familiar with the idea of alliances. However, in the original Guild Wars, this used to be a collective of guilds that could cooperate in PvP and PvE activities. In Guild Wars 2, this only applies to the World vs World game mode for now. Whenever you create your Guild Wars 2 account, you get asked what world you'd like to join. This makes little sense to a new player. As a player in Guild Wars 2, you can play with anyone you want. Worlds don't matter. Well, except for players that play in other regions. Take for example the EU or North America. They can't play together. But when you finally get familiar with the game and you want to get into World vs World, you could get confronted with lower player numbers or with players that are significantly better than you. This can immediately take you out of the enjoyment of the game mode. The alliances allow you to create your own team whenever you enter World vs World. These alliances will then compete against each other with a matchmaking system. This makes sure the strong competitive players won't face the newer or casual players. Does this still sound a bit fake? Then please check out the video that Radish made on the subject. He explained the concept perfectly in about 6 minutes. 
Are you thrilled for this feature yet? As a casual world vs world player, this certainly caught my interest. The first Alliance beta went live in September of 2021 and it sure was a learning experience for the developers at ArenaNet. It was a beta, so there luckily was room for some unforeseen errors. In a detailed blog post, the developers at ArenaNet were extremely transparent about the events that happened during the Alliance beta. It first started with players being placed in the wrong teams. Then, while trying to fix this issue, another issue occurred. Something was causing an enormous amount of stress on the servers. About 30 times more than usual. The devs found out that this was due to the logging of all the events that happened on the server. If you work in IT, work with servers or cloud computing, you most likely know that logging can take up a significant amount of costs or resources. Eventually, they found the error and fixed it. However, after this, the devs had two options. Deploy a blank build in which they had to disable the world vs world map, or they could end the beta. Unfortunately, they saw no other option than to end the beta. Luckily, the devs learned a lot from this experience and wanted to set up a second beta later in 2021. This would be November 12 of 2021. However, on November 10 of 2021, ArenaNet announced that the second beta would be postponed. There were still too many issues to continue and have a successful beta. This eventually led to a delay of the beta to 2022. I'm aiming for the second quarter of that year, a few months after the expansion, but that's just speculation. There is no official source that confirmed this yet. Another thing that will most likely be released in 2022 is the Steam release for Guild Wars 2. Although this has not been confirmed, I speculate that this will be released later in 2022. Late in 2020, it was announced that the Steam release would happen after the release of the End of Dragons expansion. However, later in 2021, the End of Dragons expansion was postponed to 2022. This inevitably meant that the Steam release was also postponed to 2022. Although there is little information about this subject, I expect the Steam release to be in Q3 of 2022. But why is this Steam release so important? To this day, there are still a lot of people that don't know about the existence of Guild Wars 2. Steam is a great platform to let Steam users discover games that they do not know about. It gives the game more visibility on a well-established platform. This will create an influx of new players that are trying out the new game. Although a good number of these Steam players will only try out the game, there will also be a good chunk of players that will stick around. Also, this might open up the opportunity to let players pay for expansions or in-game items through the Steam wallet. This makes it easier for some players to purchase something for the game. Let's hope the Steam release will be soon after the End of Dragons release. And this brings me to my next point, performance. Did you experience micro stutters or graphic related issues in Guild Wars 2? DirectX 11 might be the solution for your problems. Late in 2021, the DirectX 11 beta was released. Anyone with a Guild Wars 2 account is able to access this feature from their in-game options menu. Since the release of Guild Wars 2 in 2012, the game has run on DirectX 9. This is a somewhat outdated version of the DirectX package and could cause performance issues for some players. During the time I've played Guild Wars 2, which is about 9 to 10 years now, I've had three different computers and on neither of them I have encountered any performance issues. So it might be less common to encounter problems for some players. To increase the performance of the game, some players even created their own add-ons. This worked really well for some players, but you still had to hassle of installing, managing and updating add-ons. Guild Wars 2 does not really support add-ons, so if you had a problem, the Guild Wars 2 support could not really help you out. Anyway, the reception of the DirectX 11 beta was good. Many people started using this feature and had less graphical and performance related issues. I've used the feature as well for a couple of days, however I did not notice a significant increase in performance or graphics. FPS, animations and general performance just did not change too much for me. Also, since it was in beta I had one or two issues due to the DirectX option. One of the issues was a crash which a party member mentioned whenever a boss uses specific animation. I believe it was a boss but I just can't remember it that well. The other one was some indicators not showing up. You know, the red circles and such. But hey, that's what a beta is for. I'm certain that these issues are fixed now. I think that a proper release of this feature will be in Q3 of 2022, but only time will tell. So if you have ever had any performance issues in Guild Wars 2, make sure to give the game a shot again. The DirectX 11 option might solve all your issues. 
last but not least, a speculative one, Living World Season 6. Most of the things discussed before have been confirmed to formally release at one point. However, there is little to no information about Living World Season 6. For those who don't know, The Living World is a series of short stories in between expansions. It continues the story where the expansion story left off. Whenever a Living World season starts, an episode or story is released every three months. This is accompanied with a new map, new masteries, achievements and in some cases a new mount. Since we've seen a trend of the Living World seasons continuing the story of the expansions, I have no reason to suspect otherwise with the End of Dragons expansion. Since the End of Dragons expansion takes us to the continent of Cantha, it is extremely likely that the stories will also take place there. There are plenty of areas that we can visit based on the areas and missions of the original Guild Wars. For example, in Living World Season 4, we've seen areas like Istan, Korna, Jahai Bluffs and the Thunderhead Peaks. All of these areas were in the original Guild Wars as well. I'm sure that we will see plenty of recognizable areas when the expansion launches, but it would be amazing to see areas like the Harvest Temple, Fort Espenwood, the Deep, Urgos Warren and the Undercity reintroduced through the Living World seasons. We'll have to see. Are you ready for Guild Wars 2 in 2022? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video if you want to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.